Okay, so for the final stage of the inventive building project, what you're going to do is you're going to take your two sides, and hopefully you've got those two sides developed. You've got side one, and you've got side two. You've got your collection of textures, and you can always go back to your references, which is also important. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to take these flat sides and project them into perspective. We know that um, if we draw a box, which is essentially what we're doing with perspective, we can show two sides of it pretty readily. That is a two-sided box. And that's pretty much what we're going to do with this, with this assignment, is we're going to take panel one, put it on the side of a box, take panel two, put it on the side of the box, right? And that's kind of all of this project entails. And when it comes down to it, it really is as simple as that. The, the shape of this particular side is going to define um, how complicated this gets. And it can get pretty complex. Um, but we'll try to keep it simple. So I've got my wonky building shape, right? My wonky building shape is basically this. Kind of overhangs. It's a little bit weird. And so I have to figure out how that's going to go to perspective. So I can kind of say, well, I'm going to turn this and I'm going to show quite a bit of this long wonky side. And then I'm going to show a little bit of this side. I want to be sure that this side feels like it's kind of leaning out and this side feels like it's expanding. So I'm going to take basically this shape and this will be my basic building shape. So, um, and I kind of want to make sure that I choose my horizon, right? Like I can choose several points of view. I can go like kind of from bird's eye and look down and I could actually probably show, you know, the three sided box. Right? I don't necessarily want to do this. I'm going to stick to two sides. But I could choose a point of view up here or down here. I could choose like a normal person's six foot height. I could choose worm's eye view or like a squirrel looking at the building. So the building seems really huge. It's really up to you. So I'm going to just kind of begin. And I'm going to draw a pretty big, right? I'm going to show you with at least kind of one side how this is going to work. This is going to be my eye level right here and I have my building going out towards this eye level so here I've got my general building shape and remember mine is a wonky building yours does not have to be now what I've done on my initial sketch is I've done kind of a stacked thing where I have a wonky side that's subdivided about here that dips down in that way. And then I've got a asymmetrical wonky side that subdivides here, goes up in that way. And so what I'm going to do is, this is the widest part of the building, and I'm going to translate that wonkiness out over here, right? And because this is the widest one, I can use the corners of this to kind of help me define everything. And since I'm stacking on here, I have to figure out, well, how is that, how is that stacking overhead? So I know that over here, it's coming in and back significantly, going out and then it's coming over along this plane. But I can't line it up here, otherwise it doesn't look particularly dimensional, right? This has to feel like it's projecting outward. So I'm gonna have to move this and bring it back. I can bring it back over here and it can kind of stack like that. Or I could bring it back over here and I could stack like that. It just kind of depends on the feel that I want to create and the um, whether this angle is like parallel or it's like turning back in space. So because it's parallel, I'm going to kind of contain it within here. 
and just see how that goes. And then down here, this comes out. This side runs runs parallel, but then this has a has a funky corner where it goes back at a 45 degree angle and under this panel. So I've kind of laid out my my sides a little bit now. I'm gonna actually bring that out to the front this way. Create another little corner that I didn't have there in the beginning. So now I can go out and I can um, kind of give this platform some thickness, right? And I can run the platform all the way out and over, all the way out, boom. I can run this platform all the way out, boom. And then on top, I've got my original facade. I'm looking at it in slight perspective. So I know that the center is going to be kind of back going back in space. These were kind of blocky, make those kind of blocky. And then I can start subdividing, right? According to the sketch that I drew. And of course, there's always things that I need to change and so on. And I always remember that when I'm drawing a plane back in space, right? If I need to know where the center is, I can do the X method if I want and find the center. Or if I don't want, I can just say, well, I know this side is big, this side is smaller, so I can put the center kind of more towards the right because I know that it's a little bit smaller. And here, when you're sketching these out, remember your five value system. You know, you got your white, your half tone, right? And so when you're sketching this out, use your half tone. Don't go in with tone or court or dark, right? Especially your core and dark. You might be able to recover if you if you use some lines that are a bit of tone, but probably not. And if you're having trouble keeping that straight, then you can uh, use ten, the 10% 10 cool gray marker kind of stuff. So here I've got this sort of thing going down at my eye level. Remember these things are projecting in and out, right? So this is this this part is supposed to be out and then I need to give it give it kind of an underside here start figuring out that this is a corner right and this column has a little bit of depth and there's a window in here right need a sharper pencil so I've got a column here, and it's subdivided down here, going back in space. Over here again, this one's going slightly up. And re-emphasize my corner. And again, I'm drawing dark, you should not. So that's my window. Now if I need to inset something, I have my window shape. If I need to inset it, I go back, down, down, right? So back, vertical, back to the vanishing point, right? So I've just created a window inset. So here I've done it flat. So I need to go back in space, down, create the inset. If I want to rush ahead, I can use some cast shadow. I've created a little window inset. Then I've got a stacked corner that's going to come up on top of this, right? And go out, down, over. And make sure that that overlaps and creates an outset, right? And comes back at a reasonable point. So it would help to be very good at box forms for this sort of thing because you're going to need to do something pretty crazy here. Then I can create another little shadow under here. Remember, I just want it to be different than the, the shadow under this part, right? I want it to 
one could be different than the shadow that's getting cast on the window. Run that plane together, right? Because now I've taken this window and then I've added an outset to it. Right? So if you need to come by and do these little studies, that's totally fine too. Okay? All right. So that's kind of my little window. Um, then down here, I've got my little shelf that's going to come out and around. Get set back. Boom. Boom. Then that's going to come down along the building and out just because I wanted this to kind of break everything up. And that's going to have a different texture on it, right? So you're going to go through this whole process and develop this building really far. I'm just going to develop like a little section so you can see how this how this kind of works, right? And then I've got another little subdivision I forgot to put in. I'm going to go ahead and put that in, right? Subdivide it, make sure it goes back in space, and so on. Create a cast shadow under there. Maybe a little bit of a tone. That way it looks like this little bit is coming out in front. I need to use some line weight to kind of pull that out. I can do that. That's totally valid. I can develop this. And then I can take my window texture in there, kind of work in my window texture, right? So my window down here has a texture more or less like this. So I can do my subdivisions. And then I can emphasize the bits of it that have shadows. And so here I'm bringing my textural information in, right? And then down here I have a brick texture. Okay, so I can lay in my brick texture really faint. Make sure that my texture wraps around the object. And I'm just going to do basically four registers of bricks. And these are going to be kind of like large blocky guys. And I'm only going to do a few per division, right? So I can start with cheesy standard bricks. But then I know that I have to break them up, right? So I have to go, I have to draw each individual brick now, right? And leave space between them for the mortar. Remember this brick is actually a box that's going around this corner. Because I have the corner, this is my brick. Remember, it's going around a corner because the brick is a dimensional thing, right? I can't just go, I can't just do this and then do another full sided brick on the other side, right? That's the half brick over here. Okay, so don't do that. Here, I have a long brick that's going to come in here and then become this half brick over here, right? Long brick, long brick, half brick. Long brick, long brick, long brick around the corner. It's a half brick. Long brick over here, half brick, long, half, long, long, half. Okay, so now I've got my brick texture basically laid in. Um, let's say that these are going to be kind of lightish bricks. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create some shadows on this mortar between the bricks. And if I do that, that kind of gives my brick basically two sides, right? And I want to be sure that this is all in shadow. Because that's the side, right? And then I can cast some shadows around the bricks too. Because there's going to be a little bit of ambient light getting in there. And that'll help me just understand this texture a little bit better, right? 
I can go through, just keep keep going with my textures. Essentially what I'm doing is saying, well, this is a flat brick, this is a two-sided brick. And I can use a little bit of that mass, which essentially is showing up as a heavier, darker line, as brick. And if I need to, I can come in, and since this is kind of outsetting, I need to go in and I can give a little drop shadow here, right? I can make it flat and parallel here. And then I can add some little transition dimensions to show that um, it's kind of wrapping around this brick sort of softly, giving a texture. So this is really how you do bricks. Essentially, you just take one side, two side, and you tailor the shape to the actual brick that you're using, right? Okay, so this is, this is gonna be how you're gonna go through and develop everything. I wanna keep this video kind of short, and I want you to do a lot of exploration and kind of figure this out on your own in terms of how to put all this together structurally. And you're just going to go through this this approach and do your little mini studies if you have to and translate your flat shape into your into your dimensional form and you know how to do that because you've already practiced boxes and so on and you're just going to keep developing so i'll draw a little bit more and kind of keep developing this little this little area and um and kind of shut up a little bit more um, so here I've got my little outset that I'm going to line up back here. This is going to go around the edge of the building. What's cool about this is you don't have to be like um, super great at uh, like rendering to do this well. You just kind of have to understand a little bit about forms. Remember, I'm giving this the underside. It's going to come around the corner and so on. Remember, I'm also going to cut out this corner for this door. So I can just, just kind of like leave that there. This has to be sitting back on this wall back here. So I need to kind of define that wall, right? This is going to be in shadow because this is going to be this main area. Got my wall down here. Remember, this is actually a column that sticks out. So I can draw the face of the column, run it back in space. I'm gonna overlap here a little bit. Create a further subdivision, and this is gonna become part of that ceiling. So as you do this, you're gonna to need to adapt make some changes. This is going to go into tone, and so on. So I've got a different brick texture. It's going to be smaller back here, right? So, But this is going to be in shadow. It's going to go dark to light. And there's going to be brick subdivisions. And I can just kind of do the indication of two-sided bricks by just using some slight L's. Get a sharper pencil. I don't even have to line them up or do them particularly well. It just sort of indicates where these bricks could be. And there, I have a brick texture. So you can kind of like do quick versions of your of your textures that you've developed and continue on. So um, explore that and see what you can do with it.